They say the meek will inherit the earth. We say the nerds are already in control. Welcome to the Frackin' Nerds, episode number 216. I'm your host, Doc Martin. Joining me all the way from the East Coast. Yeah, he's not down the street in Louisville. No, he's over in New York City. Or New York, right? You're not in New York City. Is it I'm in the Bronx, New York. Yeah, so, so it's not New York City. Like, New York City is like Manhattan. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. So. I don't live there. You guys just think every everything revolves around you all. That's how. That's what I feel when I watch TV. It's like everything. You know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. People uh, were talking about that recently. They're like, "Oh, New Yorkers have this fucking smug attitude about themselves," and I'm like, "Maybe I'm not one of them." But yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think maybe it's not the people. It's it's most of your news stations and everything else are centralized in those areas, either L.A. or New York. So obviously, they're just going to be like, "Oh." Like, you guys just start jerking off if the Knicks, like, win more than three games in a row and stuff like that over there. It's like, oh, my that God. That's true. But that, that's, like, been a years of, like, bad Nick playing, you know? I know. Like, if we were, like, from fucking, I don't know, L.A., like, you know, you get a couple Kobe. of bad seasons here and there. But then the Knicks – and then you have to understand, the Knicks haven't won a championship in God knows how long. So right. that's even – you know, it went from, like – we were like the force of the East behind Michael Jordan's Bulls, and at a time we were the force of like the East when he wasn't there. To like now, you guys suck, you know. And like bad things have happened. I'm not, I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm just making my observations. You like, had your you, know, sh- you-, you had your shot when what was that? Uh, when OJ was driving down the road against Houston, right? So that was your time. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Because you guys I got mean, destroyed again, by the Spurs like, when you got into the championship. We should have had a championship with, uh, like you said, Houston, and uh, you know we could have won that. But John Starks wanted to make threes, and you know we had fucking Patrick <laughs> Ewing. So, like Patrick Ewing could have just did an easy layup. You know we would have won with a, a, a two pointer. But John Starks wants to shoot. John three. Starks. Every time I remember seeing him playing, was like, "Let me see what kind of acrobatic shot." Like he was on a playground every time he was shooting. Like he I mean, would just yeah. do just stuff that you're like, you don't really have to do that. You could just yeah. lay it up. You have a big guy in the center. Uh, <laughs> Throw it down to he Ewing. Posted, he posterized the uh, Michael Jordan, Horace Grant, and Scottie Pippen. I remember that, that one yeah. dunk. <laughs> I had that poster. Oh, on my did wall. you? <laughs> it was called the dunk, and you see Horace Grant like looking up and shit, and like that's cool. <laughs> Does he? LeBron, I think when he gets dunked on, he like moves away. Like, oh, I'm, I'm not. Gonna well, no, that. he's guilty <laughs> of when the guy's on a fast break, he just backs away slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and then starts running the opposite way so that they can get the go-ahead basket. A lot of people don't notice that about LeBron James. Whenever he knows someone's going to beat him to the basket or dunk on him, he starts running the opposite direction oh, wow. so that the person gets the ball to throw. Like Kevin Love will throw the ball all the way, and he gets the easy layup. So he gives up, people... gives up on defense, so hopefully he can get a quick quick score. Yeah, like if you notice, oh, he does that. Like if you pay attention to some of his games. I mean, the guy's been like fucking – of every basketball game after fucking the regular season for like the past eight years. Well, yeah. So you see how he plays and that's one of the things he does. So I always argue with people like, Oh, he's such a great defender. I'm like, no, he does. He just doesn't want to get dunk on. He, <laughs> he just, just leaves. He doesn't like, want to get posterized. <laughs> he doesn't want to get posterized. And when he does, he gets like, Oh, you know? And mm-hmm. then when people go, Oh, he does those chase down blocks. I'm like, yeah, because those people are laying it up. Mm-hmm. They have to dunk. If yep. they dunk, they're not going to get the block. He's not no, going to get the block. You're right. <laughs> Can we just send well wishes to Tyrone Lue, too? Because, you know, being coached by LeBron has given him such <laughs> well, does, bad health Does problems. it matter if, if he's off? I mean, LeBron's coaching anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our NBA talk for the for the day. Um, Tune in next week when we talk about the playoffs. No, but no, to, to really throw you nerds off, uh, I was reading an article about North Carolina, which, uh, if you don't know, they lost in the uh, NCAA tournament last night. I heard, and somebody uh, was know. somebody was writing like like some observations from the game, and they pointed out that there seemed to be a lot of UK fans at the game, and I and I was like, I know exactly why, because UK fans thought they were going to be a number one seed and be playing in Carolina. Where the game was at, so they had already bought up a shitload of fucking tickets, and then realized, fuck, I can't, I can't sell these, so they just uh, ended up uh, uh, sitting watching the game. And that's why. Yeah, I I, I, when I saw the notification that uh, North Carolina got upset, uh, I, re- I, I kind of just focused all my energy on Kentucky because I know there's this one person in Kentucky <laughs> that was just like literally bawling, like no. <laughs> It was that. That was almost worse beatdown than Virginia. I mean, ugh. 
Anyway. Yeah, that was the largest deficit of Roy Williams' uh, career, yes, right? Exactly, yes. Um, mm. See, so yeah, it's bad. Well, nerd talk here. Today we're going to talk uh, the director of A Wrinkle in Time. Next step is a DC comic book movie. Key and Peele. Uh, <laughs> Key and Peele are working together again. And Tamaguchis are back. So I can kill him. Yes. Die. Die, just... you fucking thing. <laughs> you had a Tamaguchi, right? Uh, no, I know. I, I had the alien one. Oh, what's the alien one? It was like an alien one that just like I, I basically played with it. It was green, and then the alien went poop, and then it died, and I was like, yeah. Like, I think I had it for, like, a week, and I just lost interest in it. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was annoying that you had to constantly either clean it or feed it. It was it was buzzing you all the time, and then after a certain point, you're like, oh, I forgot about it. It's dead. That's what it is. So are you excited about Tamaguchi's coming back? Uh, probably for most people. I don't know. You still got the Pokemon Go nerds that run around. So they would probably download this thing. Well, but, it's it, it's on the phone, right? It's yeah, not it's like on the actual, phone. So, but does it send you a, annoying alerts all the time? It'll be interesting. Well, to no. Find what's out. an alert uh, uh, on your phone? What's an annoying alert? You just fucking put it on vibrate and it just be like, oh, notification. That or, or I, I shut. I had to shut off like the NCAA one. I like I downloaded the the app to watch the games, and then it's like every time it's like, oh, this is a possible upset. I don't care. Don't care. Oh, so you actually you, the app, the NCAA app, showed you all the games. Yeah, it shows you all the games. Yep. So like for free? Uh, no. When you started it, it gave you like two hours, and then it said you had to sign in. But every time I jumped in, I jumped in for like the last five minutes of a game because that's all it that mattered. Uh, oh, I, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because on my cable provider, uh, they they were on, like they they have a new thing where like you can pick out ten channels and you get all the local channels and. So I picked out all the channels. They screwed up and gave me True TV. Sorry, I'm not an Impractical Jokers. Don't understand the fatuation with that fucking show. You and me both, buddy. I, and, 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 me and then I read both. that they're making a fucking movie, and I'm like, who the... And when I hear people like, oh, the Impractical Jokers are coming to town. So? Like, yeah, I don't understand the appeal of that show. Somebody made me watch like a skit they did, and I was like, I'm not laughing. Like, hey, what the fuck is this supposed to uh, be? four friends that like to hang out and send each other on a, adventures with microphones and earplugs, tell each other what to do, and make funny sounds. That's basically the premise of the show? Uh, that's not funny. That's not, that's, that's just hey, me going, it was called hitting cameras. Like, t- what the fuck? Tell that girl your butt itches. My butt itches. Oh, my. And they're laughing and flopping over, like, the funniest joke ever happened. It, it they need not- to bring back Kenny versus Spenny. That was a good show. <laughs> no, they need to bring back uh, Celebrity Deathmatch. That's what needs to come back. Yeah, that was a good one, too. But the old school one, not the the new one that they tried to do, and it sucked. Oh, did they try to revise that, and it just didn't go anywhere? They did, but like oh, the voices weren't the same, so oh. Nick Diamond and the other guy's voice were weird. So oh. It's like when Jim Henson died, they had weird-sounding Muppets. <laughs> Walk on, yeah, walk on, walk on, walk on, bitch. <laughs> uh, family Guy joke. Bazing. <laughs> uh, Google is joining forces with uh, the band OK Go to create classroom activities. As, have you ever seen any of their videos? I've only seen, I think, um, one. And I think it was for the Madden game. It was the one on the Madden game. Oh, they did one for the Madden game. I'm not sure which one that is. I know I it wasn't like they it, it was basically one of the on the soundtrack of Madden but I remember seeing the video for the song but it wasn't like anything related to Madden and I know they did um they, I have one of their songs it was a song that came out for like the Nike Run sneakers this was years ago Oh wow uh yeah I, I think it was called Go if I'm not mistaken but they're not a bad band I just like why would they win this prestigious honor of like giving classroom activities? Like, is it is one of them like a PT teacher or something? Or like, well, what, what it is is it allows them because they, they got such very creative. They got one music video where they did it in four point two seconds, and th- it was all created to be in slow motion, and it's it's incredible what they did. And so with the new project, four point two seconds. Four point two seconds. I think the song is called Moments. Or the one moment. Check it out if you've never seen it. It's uh, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty amazing. So they they're working with a group uh, where they're going to come up with classroom activities where uh, they'll, they'll they'll have uh, some to show their videos how they did it, and then uh, actually challenging the students to recreate the things and telling the tools that they use to create it on that. So it allowing kids to be creative. 
That's not going to work. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like that idea. Well, do you like this one? A woman stabs her boyfriend with a katana, signing cheating and too much uh, Players Unknown Battleground. Yeah, I uh, I had to actually look this up when I saw this because when you put that in the the chat, oh, anybody up for pub? <laughs> oh, you didn't know what it was. Right? Yeah, pub. Like, it's am I pronouncing pu- no, it's, it's, So I was like, what the fuck is that? So then I read the is what, article. PUBG is what it's how it's, they call PUBG. it. PUBG. Okay, so PUBG. So then I was like, what the fuck is PUBG? And then um, I had saw that in passing on the internet. I don't know if it was maybe last week or this week. I don't know, but I saw that a woman stabbed her boyfriend because of this. And I was like, oh. And then I saw what it was, and I was like, um, this is just another instance of a woman getting mad and killing their boyfriend over Madden. That's crazy. <laughs> or or what was it? It was Madden now. Then it was fucking Halo. Now it was fucking, uh, what was the other one? Gears of War, uh, Modern Warfare. Now we have this one. Yep. So, increasing uh, trend. Uh, Barber Emily Javier. 30 oh spanish that's not good <laughs> she that's been, not good she'd been living with her boyfriend aspiring professional PUBG player and part-time bookkeeper alex level for two bookkeeper years keeper for who the mom i don't know uh how, wait, wait a minute hold on i'm sorry <laughs> bookkeeper for what like isn't bookkeeper like an illegal thing i'm sorry usually like, when, when you're a book is- yeah typical bookkeepers are yeah for like bets and everything right i mean he's not like I don't know. Like for a small business, he's not doing anything like that. Dude, we this, all right. You know what? We know the true story here. You know, somebody came looking for some books weren't aligned. He was cooking the books, <laughs> so his girlfriend had to take the fall, and that's what happened. We know what really. You know, we know what happened. <laughs> Apparently, uh, he's just the the girlfriend said that he just sits at home all day playing video game, doesn't do anything to help, and then it all got bad. When she found a red hair in the bathroom, and she has green hair. <laughs> so, um, maybe she dyed her hair red at one point and forgot about it? I don't know. I like the picture of him. He's just, like, laying in his bed with a dog with his yeah. hand up, like, yeah, I'm all right. She, uh... I mean, what are you- she what went, are you getting mad at? She you, went, you live with him. He's paying all the bills. I know, exactly. He, he, she went to the mall and purchased a samurai sword to stab her boyfriend. Uh, she wait, said, wait, so wait. I'm sorry. This story gets getting better. She went out to get a fucking sword? I mean, the sword wasn't lying around? Yeah, I thought it was lying around. Like, when I think of, of a guy hanging out, playing PUBG all the time. You're, He's got to have a sword. You I mean, gotta I have, have an anime sword. sword underneath my bed. So yeah. uh, I don't play PUBG, so I'm assuming a guy who plays PUBG has some type of weapon laying I around. I mean, myself, I've always wanted to, when I when I get my podcast room done, is to get all the Ninja Turtle weapons and put those on there. And we've always been at the flea market and walked past Blade Sword, and come on, we all didn't go, mm, I, that'd be pretty cool to have. I mean, yeah, I got a fucking bleach sword mm. underneath my bed, you know? And you're doing anime there. Yeah, fuck out of here. I'm so, gangster. So apparently she, but yeah, she said she I literally th- went to the I wonder how that go. Like, oh, well, there's a lovely katana. What are you going to use it for? Oh, decorations. Probably stop my boyfriend. She what hit, was that, miss? <laughs> she hid it under the bed and she was planning on stabbing him while he was sleeping. To kill him yep. or just to hurt him? Uh, apparently under the bed also had two knives taped together. So she was going to double stab him. Yep. She was probably going to kill him. She also hid his phone so he couldn't call for help. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was definitely going to kill him. <laughs> she, you got to leave with that. She took out the weapons and then illuminated it with her boyfriend's body with his, her smartphone and then stabbed him with the sword. So let me get this straight. She took the knife, the, the katana out uh, and in one hand, yep. and then she had her light on. Or yeah, turn on her like, phone to see what. By the that's that's where I think her problem. Too much work. Man. She should have just pulled it out, stood there for a second. This is the OJ. If I would have done it, and waited till her eyes adjusted, and then you just plunge it straight into him, right? Why would you even have to wait till your eyes adjusted? You know, he's a big. I mean, I seen a picture of the guy laying in the bed. It looks like 
You just fucking stab in that general direction yeah, where the body yeah, is. Yeah, you're right. It's it's not like you're going to you may miss one or two times, but your success is going to go up pretty quickly. Yeah, she she basically, you know what? That guy should be grateful that he's alive yep. because of the incompetence of the would-be murderer he decided to be with. And he should be able to, you know, say, "Hey, cuz I picked this shitty person and she's stupid. I'm alive today." <laughs> and I should have I should have condoned murder, but, you know, <laughs> this is just too funny. Sorry. So what we figured out is, uh, yeah, one, make sure your bathroom is clean. Doesn't have any yep. weird strand hairs. And uh, oh no, no, no. One, don't date anybody who has green hair because yeah. they might have dyed it red. They That's might true. have had it red and forgot about it. That's true. And I, uh, I, don't date. I, I dated crazy a crazy. People. I dated crazy people, and they dyed their hair yes. weird colors too. Yes. So, yes, yeah, we've all gone down that hole. Well, Macy's is uh, going to use VR to let shoppers see furnitures in their homes. Why? I have to say, they're not the only ones. I know another company that uh, I've I've worked closely with or may work closely with that uh, is planning the same thing. It's going to allow you to uh, set up your room, put on VR goggles, and then walk around. Which I'm not sure how many people are actually going to want to do this because putting on VR goggles... You don't know who the next, last person. I've got people that are just like, oh, I don't want to lay on this mattress. So, you know, VR goggles. You got to be sweating. Can you catch like a sty infection from VR goggles? You, why wouldn't you be able to? I mean, oh. it's going to be around your eye and everything. If somebody's got pink eye. Mm. Or, 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 or are they going to have like white pads like at the grocery store where before you grab your cart? So would you do this? You've been on the cusp of millennials. The, the whole point is they think millennials want to go in and put on VR helmets and shop. Would would this help you if you were you were buying a new, uh, you're getting a new place and you need to buy furniture? Would you go to a place that had something like this? No, because number one, I don't give a shit. And number two, <laughs> I'm the easiest person to shop for furniture. Okay. I just want, I know what I want. I know what I'm going to get. That I think is for people who want to have like uh, that want to be like fucking interior decorators on the fly. Oh yeah, like uh, it, you know, so that doesn't work, you know. And then it's probably not even gonna look right because it's like, how would having virtual reality basically wouldn't it be augmented reality as opposed to virtual reality? Um, I guess you consider consider it augmented reality. Yes. Yeah, because you can't really you you would have to have it like the picture already of your the place that you're in yeah all you're gonna do is create the room on a tablet and then yeah. it, hopefully you know and i will tell you this most people don't know that they don't do the measurements they're like oh i'm gonna have to go home measure it's like you went out looking for a sofa and you didn't decide if you what size you needed good job i mean you could tell what fucking like oh this looks no, like it's, it's gonna it's, fit no like, it's no. when they decide to buy the sectionals they don't know what's gonna fit oh okay sectionals meaning like comes apart you can pull it apart and stuff i don't Correct. know i don't i don't do oh, furniture wow. you so. don't do furniture yeah it's multiple pieces that you can connect uh usually they take up a lot of fucking room yeah yeah it's true so. it's very true so you wouldn't use this okay i wouldn't because that makes no sense to me like i feel like Virtual reality to figure because like how are they gonna put it like are you gonna take a a file of your room that you want to fill with furniture no and you can't what what would you be see is, what I'm saying like you would be in the the department um yeah you you, you pick on like the la tablet usually they I would assume they would have general size rooms and you would pick the one you think fits maybe adding locations of windows and doors and everything else and then either I I would assume you scan. Uh, whatever the thing you're looking at, and then it puts it in the laptop or the tablet, and you can adjust it to where you need to be around, and then sit in, put the VR so you could stand and go, hmm, this looks about right. I think. Yeah, that that I don't see that working. You you have to see the actual place you're in. Yes. Meaning, like I putting a a room that fits the measurements. I don't like nobody's gonna know what the fuck the measurements are of their room. Like, I don't even know the fucking measurements of my room. I've been in here for, like, fucking seven years. Now, I think so, I think it's a way, and with Macy's, they don't, I don't think they offer a huge amount of furniture, but I think it's a way for them to compete with furniture stores where most of their stuff, inventory, is out there that you can sit and see, where this, where you put on the goggles, 
and then you can imagine what you what it look like in a room. But still, if you don't feel it and touch it, you don't know. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I don't think that's gonna work. So, Any augmented reality. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll have to wait and see what the direction of that. I I could have more information on that in uh, in about a year or so. Yeah, you've got your your finger on the pulse of that I, that I market. Do. It's it's it's, a little, it's not really launching in my area, but it could be soon. But what what will be launching soon is apparently. AMC Theaters is reportedly looking to host a 31-hour Avengers Marvel Cinematic Universe movie marathon. Why is it looking for? Like, shouldn't it just be done like they did it with the other movies? Well, they're, they, well, they're going to do it. I'm saying that they're going. I misspoke is what happened. The marathon reportedly going to be 31 hours long, which is roughly 1.5 days. But apparently the dates and location for the event have not been announced yet. So would you? We've talked about <laughs> when they were doing twenty-four hour movies and everything else. Well, I, I I think um I asked one of my friends how they do this, and apparently it's not twenty-four hours straight. I think like it's from like the first movie runs at like at eight o'clock in the morning, and then the last movie would end at like twelve, and then they you come back and finish the rest of it. Oh really? Okay. So I don't think you you spend a full because I I was like you. They can't have a full 24-hour open movie. Th- they're like, no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I think you stay. Oh, you, so they'll stay do, for the so, first. Oh, so they'll do a majority of them. Like maybe they'll start at six o'clock and roll yeah, till about midnight, the and then uh, have them come back in the next day. Yeah, and then it ends with the the Avengers. I wonder how much would that cost? Would that be like a fifty-dollar thing? Or well, you're talking about how many movies there? Yeah, but you can't charge. No, per you movie. can't. You it have to bundle. So if you're doing it for the the Avengers movie, that's like I paid twenty three dollars for my ticket to see it. So what you would think, they charge for the other fucking bundled movies? Do you think Is I could use like, my movie pass as long as it's not in IMAX? They would allow that, right? I don't know. That's a good question. Because they only they don't allow IMAX or uh, 3D. So as long <laughs> as it's not those. Look at me not. But going that's a special thing. occasion, though. It, so well, I mean, I think I would assume that as long as it's listed as an event that's airing that does not have the word IMAX or 3D, it should be allowed. I'm not going to attend this. Fuck that. I'd rather sit at home. I wanted to <laughs> do it, but my friend was like, "But we're 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 doing a group thing," so it was like, "Ah." But I would have done it just to like experience that. But think about your feelings when the Avengers. Infinity uh, is a war. Yeah, Infinity War. When that finally airs, you're going to be pretty fucking tired of sitting in a movie theater. Well, no, because we're going on the basis that but when even- we see Avengers, we're already well rested. We'll probably see like the, the lat like, well, you know what? It'll probably go with what? Guardians of the Galaxy 2. To be, Thor no, Ragnarok. Yeah, it would be, it would be uh, Black Panther. Black Panther being the last one the- leading up to. Uh, Infinity War. Yeah, so you would get those four movies right before Infinity War on the next day. So what was your so, thoughts on the the new trailer? I thought it was really good, Look. even though the first one that they think they they showed was longer, but this one was pretty cool. They kept it nice and simple. You don't really know the plot line, just know that Thanos is like fucking. I want to destroy half the world so I can make balance and blah 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 blah. And uh, you know, I'm interested. I'm I'm excited. Uh, hopefully it's, it, you know, you can't go wrong with the Russo brothers. They did such a good job with the Captain America movies. They can't fuck this up. I don't think so. I, I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to connect it like in the comic book where he's doing it. Cause they we really don't know why he's doing what he's doing. Oh, cause you're in the comic books is for death. Right? It is for death. He's trying to win the love of death. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll, they'll like, uh, change that up a little bit. I mean, he's got to be crazy to some extent, right? Yeah, there's got to, there's has to be a reason for what he's doing. It's kind of yeah. like watching Game of Thrones. You got to wonder what the Ice King, what's his plan? But they they've never really kind of explained it. I mean, and they've got like six fucking episodes. They got to explain that why he's doing what he's doing. So, is it was it ever explained in the books prior or no? No, the in the books uh, they don't really. It's it's that 
it's that force that is happening. It's coming because all the books are always each chapter is told in a point of view of a certain character. Oh, really? Yeah. So like you don't even know what like Rob Stark when he gets you know he you know ultimately spoilers for people who haven't read the book or seen the show. You know, it's been like four years. Yeah. So he uh, he dies in the the third book in the third season. He his point of view is never there. It's always what Rob, they're always talking about what Rob's doing. And everything else, either Caitlin is talking about it or somebody else. So, oh, so Rob never gets a point of view in the whole. No, it's all it's all talking about what he. A lot of the major characters, uh, there's a number of them that just yeah, you you're not finding their point of view. You're only seeing as somebody else is observing them and what they're doing. So maybe that's his uh, indication that they die. Ooh, I don't know, but we don't know what the uh, what the reason for the ice king. But we have to wait till was it the night. so um. I'm I'm not going crazy, but Peter Dinklage is in, in Infinity War, right? That is correct. Okay. So, so I think he's playing the dwarf. Imp. The imp or, or whatever imp. that's, I think, going to help Thor make his uh, axe is what some people are thinking about. Well, doesn't he really make, like, they show, like they're sort of speculating that when he's, like, pulling those things together, like and he's like ah that's making a new mo- uh, I don't know how to pronounce it Majorn is it Majorn? No, he's making his axe is what he's making. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be his new yeah. weapon. I think that's what everything. Hey, we're we're gonna get Majorn back, right? Am I saying that right, Majorn? Uh, <laughs> Mjorn? Is it Mjorn? It's, it's Minor, me, uh, Minor, something like that. I'm fucking. I'm saying it wrong. It's fucking all that. Yeah. I'll probably watch Thor Ragnarok later. There you go. Well, the uh, director of uh, A Wrinkle in Time, which uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm not planning on going to see because of uh, Oprah Winfrey and uh, and uh, I don't give a shit that Oprah Winfrey. You know, just like I love when Disney comes out with these movies that is like, oh, this is the most acclaimed book of all time. Like, how many fucking acclaimed books can Disney movies be made of? Like, how many acclaimed <laughs> books are there? And it even looks like a stupid premise. Like, white guy, black daughter, try to say, I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I think... Was that, it you that posted that thing? That yes. He, he looks like the it, Team America he guy. He looks like uh, <laughs> the guy from Team America. It looks dead up like him. It's, it's like, I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah. That's... My acting is the best acting in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen everything. You ever seen a man eat his own head? Well, no. Well, then you haven't seen everything. <laughs> Uh, so the director, Ava DuVernay, uh, is looking to now direct Jack Kirby's creation, The New Gods, for Warner Brothers in D.C. Because you know what? They're making such wonderful choices. Uh, it almost felt like and, and like A Wrinkle in Time didn't do all that great like they were expecting it. Did it, did it get number one? No. <laughs> Black Panther is not releasing number one. Like Tomb Raider couldn't even get it. Yeah, too, but see, that's really weird because I thought the Tomb Raider movie did it get bad reviews? Or it did. Like people were saying, oh, it, people it were, did? Yeah, people were just like, "There's not a lot of substance in this movie. It's not that great." And what, uh, what, what substance? It's a movie based off the game. Play your game, you get the <laughs> substance. Like <laughs> I don't understand this. It's true. I, they, they they just say there's not much into the movie. I I had free tickets, but I wasn't able to get out there to see it, so I have no clue if it's any good or not. And I mean, I saw that like the fucking Black Panther made twenty three million or twenty four million or twenty five. I know see. Tomb Raider made twenty three, and I was like, damn, what a all fucking movie! Like it'd be uh, weird, right? If Black, Black Panther, Panther is, made like, number one twenty six million, Tomb Raider made twenty three million. Hold on, and A Wrinkle in Time only made sixteen million. Like the Christian movie, I can only imagine made more money than A Wrinkle in Time. And Wrinkle in Time dropped fifty percent of its audience. That was but that, see, that was one thing I never understood about this movie. It's supposed to be a, a based off of this acclaimed book that sold millions. And you mean to tell me you didn't like? I didn't see no advertisements outside of commercials for this movie. It looked, so what they just it looked they stupid. They, I don't I don't know. Maybe they thought maybe Oprah Oprah Winfrey people were like gonna go see it. Like no, Oprah Winfrey people don't give a fuck about this no, movie. No, they don't. They don't. And it, and it just feel when when it, it just feels like she's forced on it, and then it was like every every commercial or whatever, it's all all about women and, and diversity, and I was just like, what? 
No, okay. I guess so. I, I mean, okay. white father, black daughter. I'm like, how did this work again? <laughs> it works because he has a black wife that's how oh that's what it was uh, I, yes. I never saw the wife i never uh, saw the she I must have me i don't know if she dies like, i don't know the story uh the only time i remember a wrinkle in time is when uh they did it on reading rainbow and it's been a long time since reading rainbow so jesus christ so, <laughs> that book is that old it is that old <laughs> oh fuck me yeah i thought this came out like <laughs> Three years ago, and I was like, "Oh, it took them that long to make this movie." Uh, it should have been an ABC uh, movie of the week. I, th- I think they made it before. Uh, Nineteen sixty-two was when it was first published. Jesus Christ! It took them almost fifty years to make uh, this movie. They made a two thousand and three television film, and then a two thousand eighteen is the one that just came out. Oh God! And I kind of feel like with this whole thing with DC, is they're like, "Oh, she seems to be popular." Because yeah, she, that's she basically it. It almost seems like it more of like, well, she's female, and the only movie that made money was Wonder Woman with a female director, and then she's black, so we can check that off too. It just feels like they're they're checking off thing instead of going. Do you think this is a good person for? I mean, and then who's really going? We needed the new gods. Like, you couldn't even get fucking Dark Side in the Justice League movie. Now you're just going to force them into the this movie? I wouldn't assume he would be in it. Well, he is cuz he's supposed to be the big one of the big bads in it. <sighs> but in that that storyline, the Jack Kirby storyline? Yeah. It's about it's about all the the new gods and everything else and he's considered one of the new gods. I don't this is just it's, Who's it's, running like Warner Brothers, isn't it like seriously? That, isn't it like that Asian guy who's the one they're all blaming for being the issue? No, they, they fired him. They okay. they told him they, you're on the, this is just a bad ah oh, man. You know, and you're right. They want like they're jumping on this hot topic because she's this you know African American director who helmed a hundred million dollar studio film that didn't do well. So right then off the bat, uh, it's your fault. This movie sucks. <laughs> And I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that, but from from how I see Hollywood likes to work, it's like if you're the director of a movie and it doesn't do very well, it's kind of your fault. Yeah. It's not Oprah Winfrey's fault. It's not Reese Witherspoon's fault. Nope. It's not fucking that lady from The Office's fault. It's not, <laughs> it's not Steve Trevor's fault. It's the director's fault. Yep. You didn't make a good movie. <laughs> so you would think the, the Warner Brothers would be like, uh, we're not going to use her, you know. Oh no, we are gonna use it. Then I want to ask, like, has anyone said, "Have you read this this comic book?" Like, <laughs> I know like, it's like that's <sighs> nobody's calling for this comic book. That's what I'm thoroughly confused by. Well, no, I want to know if she read the comic book. Yeah, she oh no, she's she's like, reading it. Problems. She's reading it now. She's already signed, and now okay. she's doing her research. I I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Give it. Five to six months, she's going to exit as director of this movie. <laughs> and you're right. You're absolutely right. We don't need this movie. What we do need as comic book fans is uh, a stable cinematic universe from DC. And right now, they don't have that. And supposedly, Aquaman is so good and da 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 da, da but we're not going to hold our breath. Like, Wonder Woman was an okay movie. Justice League was... Justice League. Batman vs. <laughs> Superman was okay. The extended cut. Um, but right now, those people at Warner Brothers need to not make new movies. They need to stabilize the cinematic universe that they have right now. Josh, we just uh, Josh, we just got breaking news. Apparently, the rumor now is, is Ben Affleck is probably not going to appear in this movie. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We don't need Batman saving the new guy. No, gods. no, just, just, the, just the fact that... Every every movie now, they're just like we don't know if Ben Affleck's going to appear in it. He really Ben Affleck doesn't even know he when he wants doesn't to be in want it. to be in it. Just just go ahead and pull that band aid off, DC. He doesn't want to be in it. He realized like, how think, the sinking ship is happening. I don't even think it's a sinking ship. I think he was like we, Ben. We want you to be his movie. I don't want to do it. Ben will let you direct the movie because he loves directing movies. He directed the the last one that the, like Warner Brothers did. And I guess he thought he was going to have freedom and stuff like that. And they had different ideas. Like I said, I think they cared about money. And I'm pretty sure we would have got a good Batman movie out of him if they would have left him alone. But they yeah. were like, no, we need 
we need this shit to be we, we need to be pumping these movies out because uh-huh. i think the more movies they pump out the more money they'll get regardless of how they perform in the box office yeah exactly that's what that's i mean i don't know that's that's what logan did and he got oscar Considering nominated, yeah. <laughs> didn't get not did it get nominated? Yeah, they got nominated. They got nominated for screenplay, which I think was bullshit. They should have been nominated. He should have been, uh, at least best actor. He should have got a nomination for best actor, in my opinion, because that role you kind of go, he's doing everything. You feel for 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 a, a fictional character, like, yeah, and it's a fictional story. But you feel for him, you like feel, you know, he's you, in the fucking limousine sleeping. You feel the he's struggle like that he's dealing fighting with. It, you know, that's that a, was a very good performance. But that's the idea. problem is it's it's a superhero movie and everything. But then they want, but then you got people freaking out, going, "Oh, Wonder Woman." I'm like, no, stop checking your boxes. Make a good movie. It's fine. Have you ever? That's a, a conversation I got into this week. Is when they're put like Jessica Jones came out, season two. Let me just yeah. say. Starting from episode five, it is bad. It is really. It is Iron Fist bad. Uh, oh my god! Oh, oh! I was just like, and the big thing they kept that one. It came out on uh, International Women's Day because that was a big thing. Because you know she's woman and she's strong, and every director was a female. And then as I kept watching how bad this fucking show kept going, I'm starting to go. Is it because you guys pushed a certain agenda, or, or what's going on? Because can you spoil something for me? Because I have yet to watch it. What but can you I made reference to like, oh, someone helped her stop the bus, like physically, like they used powers or no? Yes, yes, yes. Two people use powers. Um, yeah. So who were they? <laughs> uh, Jessica was one of them. Uh, yeah. Well, it, well, spoilers for anybody that's listening. Uh, it was uh, it was her mom. Oh, okay. Her mom, her mom got like they worked on her in the same place that she was when she died, but she got burned so bad they put somebody else's face on her, and it gets what? Yes, yeah, so the only thing Jessica recognizes is her mom's voice. Her mom apparently is super strong, like stronger than Jessica, and but has violent tendencies. So like. Like they, they're like she's murdering people, and Jessica's finally realized it's her, and she's trying to stop her. And then in the middle of it, they go, "Let's buddy them up, and let's see what life on the road with Jessica and her mom is like." And I was like, "Fuck you, Jessica Jones, fuck you." And then, god damn it, they fucking they took Trish to a whole different direction that felt horrible. Uh, they pretty much just shit on Malcolm. They were like, Malcolm, we know you have problems. We're going to fuck with you in this whole fucking episode and just be just shitty to you. I didn't, I'm like, I, the only person I liked was Jessica. And then they kept adding other characters in there. Like, I was like, I don't give a, but the bus scene where they're trying to stop her new boyfriend's little kid being taken by his mom um, on the bus, the, her and her, uh, Jessica's mom st- grabs the bus and stops it from going i go this is fucking stupid (laughs) just out loud this is fucking stupid and guess what the show didn't fucking redeem itself so if you want to watch it go fucking watch it just it's a load of shit no i'm gonna watch it because you know i I, you know i i watch the mcu television stuff and uh hopefully uh i make fun of it just as much as you do but i just wanted to know who stopped the bus i'm because my friend was like, you think Luke, <laughs> I have a friend who, um, he's a, he's, he's a fucking, a sexual deviant. So he was like, so yeah, Luke Cage going to get up in that pussy again? And I'm like, I don't think so, chief. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, and he's like, nah, he was breaking that dick off in that white girl. I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Cause I don't, I think they decided like, we're not going to have people pop up on the show, even though they could do that. They just don't want to do it. Yeah, no, Luke, Luke does not... he's like, I thought you said she wasn't going to fuck him. She fucked him in the first episode. I was like, you're watching the first season again, chief. <laughs> he's like, oh shit, you're right. I was. And yeah. I just started laughing. Yeah. Luke does not appear in this season. Do they mention anybody like <laughs> uh, uh, Kilgrave? Kilgrave is the only one. Uh, Kilgrave and then uh, Johnson. Doesn't he? He kind of pops up, right? Because like he has like this mental residue in her. Yes. She starts spoilers again, seeing him, which sadly starts to remind me how good season one was seeing that. Oh, this was the only good part. And now you've just reminded me of why this season 
fucking sucks. Oh. But yeah. So, yeah. Oh, God. When her and her mom grabbed the bus. Fucking A. I'll watch it and I'll enjoy it, it and it, laugh. It, like, it was, oh, this is what Doc was laughing. It, oh, you know what? I'll watch it and I'll be like, oh, man. I wonder if Doc had a problem with this or did Doc have a problem with that? Most of it I did. Oh, oh. When you get to the part where Trish gives Malcolm something and you realize what a fucking cut she is, you'll get to that part. Like, um, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, hey, Malcolm, you know, is an addict. Malcolm's having a hard time trying to stay clean. Let's give him one of those inhalers that fucking get you addicted like we saw in the first season because he's hurt a little bit. Oh, yeah. He's not going to have any problem with that. Fucking, oh. fucking cunt. Oh, no. That you, oh, God. That fucking. I'm sorry. Jessica Jones season two sucks. Put it now right. it gets moved up <laughs> to the top spot of worst Marvel television. <laughs> no, show no, no. I mean, I think Iron Fist is still right there at that bottom. I'm putting them right under Defenders. Like, that's where I'm putting them. Oh, she's sliding. Yeah, right Defenders up. to me could have been better. It wasn't bad but well the biggest problem that, was it was iron fist it was like oh i don't care about danny Rand. just danny. yeah they made that whole thing of like so like why was that their way of trying to redeem um iron fist i by think making so. him like the central part yeah i think so well, like let's get that good luck <laughs> or, or let's let's make it so all the people that didn't watch iron fist because it was so bad just at least we can kind of tell the story a little bit more i don't know all right to continue on, it looks like uh, we know we know one person that's going to be going to see Teen Titans Go. Um, <laughs> uh, multiple times, probably. <laughs> yes, multiple times. That's correct. Until he figures, I want to see it again. Until he figures no. out. Until he figures out no, how to. No, I want to see it again. <laughs> he figures out how to stream it on his box. Ah. Oh. They probably will because like, they have the, the fire stick, so a bootleg version will pop up. Oh, yeah, it'll be a can version because you know not a clean version is coming out for a while. Well, yeah. T- Teen Titans Go, the go to the movies, which uh, I don't mind Teen Titans. Some people would fucking hate Teen Titans. Just think it's abomination of what the original Teen Titans was. Uh, I, I'm, I feel that same way. Uh, they got some voice actors coming in. Um, some of them, uh, like... Uh, Little little Yachi, little Yachi. What the fuck is his name? Uh, it is pronounced Little Yachty. Little Yachty, who's uh, obviously a rapper by that name. Uh, I'm thinking he's playing uh, John Stewart. You would think. Why? Because he's black. I bet you. I swear to God, I think he is. Have you heard what this man sounds like? No. What does he sound like? Does he sound like 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 really high or? Let's Google, see. just go to YouTube and put Little Yachty uh, Breakfast Club interview. What? This is okay. what his voice sounds like. Oh, God. Here we go. This is what what a black superhero <laughs> on Teen Titans Go is going to sound like. Hold on. Let me see what he is first. Like, I, swear to, I mean, maybe me being racist, uh, I automatically assumed he was uh, He's going to be. Uh... Oh, fuck you. He is green light. Fuck you. <laughs> So let's hear what he's going to sound like. Uh, let's... Fast forward, it's like when like you don't have to see. like. What am I looking for here? Uh, it should be like he's wearing a red, a red hoodie. Or but I'm looking like, Breakfast Club? To... Oh, okay, so he's on the, the, the radio show. Yeah. All right, here we go. Look at that hair, too. Yo, Fast forward, then. And you've had a couple of records hit before. That's not him. Besides that, no, I know. A lot of great features. Target commercials. You had oh, no. features. So what do you say to all the people that called you a one-hit wonder when you came out? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I have nothing negative to say. Right. <laughs> you, now, you, let you me ask you this. like the poster that's, child for like... That's, uh, like that's is, that the voice of, is that who they're making fun of in Atlanta this season? Have you watched Atlanta? Uh, yeah. They got the guy with the Yahoo thing is that who they're making fun of or is that actually a real rapper that's on there which one the the one that was like flipping out yeah he's like i don't want you to no, play I, don't think that, I think that was just like oh, making fun old, of just like everything that's like going that. on like i have to say sidetrack atlanta is probably one of the best tv weird. shows out oh right my now. god can I, I i couldn't agree more with you i just every episode is extremely it's like 
it's very hard for myself to find a show that every episode is just strong from start to finish. And you must have been happy with the this week's episode that just passed at the end to see such a great Atlantean falcon oh. just hanging out at strip club <laughs> racing people. Well, it was Michael Vick. It was Michael Vick. And I was like, you know what? Would you have ran against him? No. But I like how he was like, Six races in ten minutes? I'm like, yeah, six races in ten minutes. He's recovering. Like, yeah, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? First it's Cat Williams, and now it's Michael Vick. They're both gonna have a career resur- resurgence because of that show. <laughs> Cat Williams was great in there too. He's like, I was not with her from 1974, so I don't know what kidnapping you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have that fucking alligator. If you've not watched Atlanta, Atlanta is just an incredible show. Uh, it is. Really, I mean, it's it's one of those. It's it's. I would say it's. It Donald Glover's done an incredible thing with it because it's very kind of Chappelle style, where he makes fun of everybody. Like he is just. But it's like serious. Too. Yeah, it's, like it's the a, shit with the it, like the racial profiling. Oh God, yeah. Love. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's so well written, uh, just kind of like pulling back the curtains and going, this is how absurd people act. This is how racist some people act. And it is true to life. And yeah, even the can says it on the it says it on the can, but they're still not going to charge you that. That's much. my greatest. That's the best episode. <laughs> of the, it says it on the can. It does says it on the can. But back to little Yachty. This is a horrible mistake. Please don't put that man as the voice of John Stewart. That is John Stewart. Like. I just wanted to be the cool kid to stand out and be like, I don't. True. You know what I'm saying? Be different. Yeah, and I used to just test my mic because, you know, it's, that's a lot of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? People try to make you do something or get you to do something. You never notice it's them trying to, like, really influence Phil you. Lamar is rolling around <laughs> in his grave, and he's not even dead yet. Oh. You motherfuckers couldn't let me play the, play the Green Lantern. <laughs> I'm the voice of every black superhero ever. Uh, Will Arnett, which I assume is going to be playing Batman. Uh, Kristen Bell, let's see. Who Kristen Bell yep. is going to be? Will yeah. Arnett's going to be Batman. Okay, so that's good. I I mean, w- I'm assuming. Cool. No, he is Slade Wilson. So Will Arnett's going to be Slade Wilson? Yes. Oh. Uh, they're going to make it too comical. Chris- Kristen Bell is playing Jade Wilson. Um, I guess So they're he- going to put... Wait a minute. So... I, Cause I asked Matt that I was like, "Do they ever mention Slade Wilson on the show?" And he was like, "Vaguely, but he's never been on the show." So they're gonna put him in the movie, putting him in the movie, and he's gonna be a joke. So you mean to tell me Ron Perlman wasn't available? I guess not. No. They have the original voice of Teen Titans. Plus, why so would you, they- the guy who did Lego Batman? Why would you put him then to be Slade? I mean, you could find somebody else with a deep, ominous kind of voice. <sighs> But the, the biggest one, though, he's finally going to get to play Superman, and that's Nick Cage. I mean, he did name his son Kyle, so <laughs> come on. Well, he had, like, an action comic number one that he had to sell because of the IRS thing. I'm um, still thinking that's still going on because he's making shitty movies. He, is shitty making, movies he, made, <laughs> he made one here in Louisville just recently. It's that mom and dad one where all the parents go crazy and try to kill all their kids. So like, I mean, how much money has how much? I know fucking who uh, Johnny Depp loaned him money or gave him money, really? but like, how much money does this man owe the IRS? I don't know. Like, Wesley like, Snipes said, "Fuck it, I'll just go to jail for a little while." And because he's <laughs> like churning out Netflix classics like left and right, <laughs> no, <laughs> like available on Netflix the same day. <laughs> do you think he's gonna try to do it in the same way he felt like he was gonna do it in the Tim Burton version? I, I never saw that documentary. So did like I don't I, did he I, have a, I don't know did, if there's any the dialogue. Test, or I don't something? know if there's any test footage, but I would assume he worked on a way of how he was going to present his Superman. There was video like with the suit, like they show yes. him with the suit. Yeah. So I would assume like maybe he was in character while he had the suit on. I would. I would that's Nick Cage. You know he was. <laughs> but do you think he's going to be like real serious, or is he going to be like? Nick Cage. It's fucking Teen Titans a go. Oh, I know. To the movie. And then on top of that, they got <laughs> Will Arnett doing the voice of Slade Wilson. Now yes. let's take a time out here. Will Arnett, you just said was, oh, I thought he would be the voice of Batman. Yeah. But how was he in Batman, Lego Batman? It was very comical, very like stupid. Yeah, it was. 
That's why so I they're figured... gonna put that guy as Slade Wilson. No, no, you just saw they're gonna have a rapper named Little Yachty portray Green Lantern John Stewart, who is probably the most serious of all Green Lanterns. Like, it, it, and you just heard his voice. Is is it like? Are they like going? Hey. We need some way to make other people come to the movies, and they were like, "You know what, kids love little Yachty. Yeah. So let's bring him in because so, <laughs> that's what people are." As waiting. of of last month, or rather, no, last year, Nicholas Cage's net worth is twenty five million dollars. So I guess he doesn't owe the IRS anything. <laughs> when you owe the IRS money, your net worth is like a negative amount. Yes. Just ask DMX and Chris Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Netflix has won the stop motion animated Wendell and Wild, which is actually uh, going to be, I think, created and produced by uh, Key and Peele. Oh yeah, great! Key and Peele coming out with you know, well, Peele's really is it Peele? Uh, yeah. uh, are you mean uh, Jordan Peele? Yeah, Jordan Peele's the one that's winning Oscars, and the other uh, Key is just like you know, he's he, just he, doing he, commercials he, and shit. He had, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So who was carrying who on the show? I would say Keel was doing most of the like. I mean, Keel. <laughs> Jordan Peele Keel was doing most of like the impersonations and okay. characters. And Jordan was writing like, it all. Think, if you think about it, like most of that show is pretty much famous for the hey, 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 Ron, and the, the <laughs> yeah. <substitute> ghetto teacher. <laughs> yeah. So that's him. But maybe Peel was probably the one that created it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy when I see him, uh, even when they were on Fargo. I thought it was. Really good. So, oh, they were on Fargo. Yeah, were they, they were like, on the fir- street- first season is Fargo. Oh, were they like street toughs? No, they were uh, FBI agents that were sent to the basement to try to find some information. Like they were like, oh. "We're putting your offices in the basement. You better figure out something." Oh, yeah. So they they're coming out. It's uh, apparently uh, their monkey paw group is going to be teaming up with Bad Robots, and. Uh, uh, for a Lovecraft Country for HBO, which is an anthology sci-fi thriller, uh, which is storytelling from an African American perspective, a man embarks on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America. This is different from the stop animation thing um, to find his missing father, and then runs into racist terror of white America and spirits connected to Lovecraftian. That's the that this is going to be a stop motion or this is no 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 this did. is this is an HBO oh. series that they're coming out. The stop motion is a, a completely different thing. No, I mean that, that doesn't sound like that would go over very well for the kids to watch. Yeah, I mean, but is it is that show geared towards kids? Uh the stop motion thing. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming it is. I'm trying to think what I'm trying to see if they've got any information in regards to what it is about. No, they don't. Yeah, the, the, like they're apparently writing a book based upon the screenplay for this. So there's no real word on what exactly this is going to be about. This is the second apparently Netflix movie. Remember we've talked about, uh, or no, we talked about on Simply Drunk that they're making a stop motion animated Bubbles film about Michael Jackson's beloved pet chimp. That's supposed to be uh, oh. <laughs> classic. Is he going to be giving out Jesus juice? I don't know. <laughs> so that is coming out so they've got a lot of stuff in the works and also you know that he's trying to reboot the Twilight Zone for their CBS All Access so yeah yeah that that sounds fun Joshua were you always were you ever a fan of uh, this show if, uh, oh well if I, hold on you gotta, you gotta have it on deck bro you can't just like <laughs> ask know. me the question I, know. I was like then... I was like oh I forgot I brought the, the sound down so that uh, how about this show Josh I'm, I'm assuming, uh, assuming no since not... I was not a big fan of okay. it I, I did watch it I, I watched a good chunk of the mid, the middle part of it um my ex girlfriend loved it. She had all of them on DVD, but I never cared to watch it. But I, I, I can't say I, I hated it. I, I didn't give it a chance. But then I started watching it, and it was really good. 
and it was probably a really good show. Why? Uh, it, well, uh, if you don't know what he's talking about, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, created by Joss Whedon. Apparently, Fox has now came out and said that if... Time uh, out, time out, time out, time out. You think motherfuckers who listen to the show don't know that theme I, song? I just, I don't want to assume somebody might have randomly got on the show and it was just like, what? Buffy? Oh, I've never heard of that show. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm always surprised what you guys don't know sometimes. I'm like, what? How do you not know this? But you, Buffy was pretty big. Uh, apparently, Fox has said now that uh, if Josh wants to reboot the series, that it's a go ahead. Well, he's looking for work anyway, so. I don't think he's going to reboot it. I don't know. I don't uh, think so. I think if you reboot it, you, 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 you do it in an animated style and bring back all the people that can do voice acting, which pretty much all of them can do the voice acting for it because they're not. Sarah Michelle Gellar's not doing anything, right? I don't think she needs to do anything. All right. But do you want to see, would you be fine with a rebooted Buffy? No, I think they should leave well enough alone. And I think he's smart enough not to follow that trend of like rebooting shit. Yes. So it, 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 like if I'm Fox, I think Fox should find something maybe not rebooted, but maybe do uh, another show based in that universe. Do you think they you, could do something do you like that? you feel like Fox I mean, is like... How, tr- much, how far did it go in the comic books? I know he did a comic book run. Like, how far did it go? There's, is it still going? Yeah, I think there's season 10 or 11 on the comic books. So maybe they could just, you know, do that. Retell the story of where that was at? Possibly. No, no, just oh. like, you know... Continue it on. Maybe continue it on with like someone else. Like, like, like this is me just being fucking like, um, just throwing it out there. Cause like one of the premises was they had like, uh, slayers from all over the world, right? They had like a school or something like yes, that, right? That's correct. So, so maybe why don't you do a show based on the school? Like, you know, Giles or, or Giles like characters like overlooking like, a school or a group of them and they have these adventures and stuff like that. Maybe that, that could, you know, work. there was talks of doing like a prequel, which was going to be about Giles, uh, before he, you know, started working with Buffy, which was an interesting idea. But I mean, that actor, it's, it's way past his time for like age wise. You'd have to definitely recast. It almost feels like Fox is like trying to get as many properties started before the Disney deal gets through. Hmm. But uh, why would they? If the Disney deal goes through, like, what are they gonna do? Like, well, they would still, just... well, they would still kind of own the rights, so they could still make money, I guess. Or they're trying to, I don't know, because it seems doesn't it feel like they're just trying to make a bunch of movies for Marvel before the Fox deal happens? No, I mean, does that make any sense though? Because Marvel could just be like, well, we're not gonna go with this. We're just gonna scrap it and reboot everything. Yeah. So you're just like, why do that? Why do like you're just trying to cash in before you get bought out? That's what I think is happening. Yeah, they're trying to make as much money before they get bought out and everything else. So we'll have to wait and see. Do what? Uh, we've been doing it for about an hour. Oh, I don't know why you didn't get alert. That's weird. I'm not sure. Hour and ten minutes. We're rocking and rolling. And it's because of Josh and I. Josh and I just having conversation after conversation. Animated Comedy Central Park is going to be coming from the creators of Bob's Burger. This had a bidding war. I'm surprised. Why, though? I, I don't know. I mean, Bob's Burgers is big. They've already signed up for... Uh, they've already got a two-season pickup by Apple. Yeah. So what, it's going to be on Apple TV exclusively? Yeah, that's that'll fail. Because not everybody can get Apple TV. Isn't, like, Apple TV just, like, the, the little, it's a little thing that it's, you... It's like a Roku, little... Yeah, it's like a Roku device. So that'd be, like, putting it on in the only way you can watch it. It's as it's, it's successful as, like, throwing it on the PlayStation Network. Because unless you have a PS4 or whatever, you're not going to watch it. Bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. <laughs> So that is coming. Uh, apparently, Fox is working on a Kevin Hart animated show called Little Kev. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. That is happening. Double no. Homer Simpson got pulled over by English police. One English police officer said she was not fooled by the fake Homer Simpson's driver's license. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't. A man being pulled over in Milton Keynes, England, and an officer, a driver's license with the Simpsons Patriarch's fake ID, with the Simpsons' correct address. 
at 28 Springfield Way on there. Uh, oh, apparently not. Oh, no, it didn't even have the correct address. No, it, yeah, it's at 28 Springfield Way. It's supposed to have 740, or 742 Evergreen Terrace. Uh, she said the driver's cars were seized and the driver was reported for driving without insurance and also driving without a proper license. Obviously didn't have a proper license. Cause why would you pull out your uh, Homer Simpson thing? Ah, uh-uh. in video game news, Tamagotchis are coming back to your phone. We talk about this no, at the beginning of the show. Well, I'm just so that people know that it's, uh, they're going to be, they're not really sure how the game is going to be, if it's going to be like an AR, like virtual reality pet, or just a little game that you play on there. I think they would go with AR. Uh, and so then you, you get to see animated. You get a better animated view of yeah. it dying. Like imagine <laughs> if like it had a heart attack and it's like, ah, ah, and it just kills over. And it's like a heart explodes or uh, if you feed it too much and it just gets fat and obese. And then it's yeah. like, ah, oh, I need to lose weight. And then please help me. You're killing me. You just keep fucking feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. Wu-Tang album reference. <laughs> and then it just fucking dies. So the download is free. But you can uh, trade some money or ad watching for bonus and perks for your little thing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to ad watch the <laughs> shit out of things. <laughs> like, oh, I need him to get a birthday cake. So I'm going to watch this two minute video. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to download this. I think I'm I think I'm good. Yeah. Now, I'm interested in seeing the Ghostbuster game. They're coming out with a Jurassic Park game, too. But I'm, I'm more interested. What, in like, like you got to run and swipe left and swipe right to do uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah, like the dinosaurs chasing you. So I guess like, oh, you try to, or try, you're trying, you're trying to right. capture them or something. I don't know. And then you can, <laughs> yeah, and then you can battle, battle your your dinosaurs. <sighs> and then, as we talked about with the guy who got stabbed with a katana playing too much PUBG, well, his girlfriend will be happy to find out that there's a mobile port that just got released today. It was initially out in Canada, and now you can go and download it and. Uh, Play uh, one versus ninety nine on your, uh, your your tablet or your phone. Wasn't that like a game show on NBC? Um, it it was, and then it was the best. X- Do you ever remember it on the Xbox, like three sixty? They had a no. version yeah. of it, and it, it was it would play. I think throughout the day that you could just play anytime. And then they had an actual like live version, and I made it to the ninety nine. I was so hyped. Like you had to like. Uh, to get on there, you had to like be super awesome on your answers and be one of the highest scores, and then it sent you to the ninety nine. And I always played with like three or four friends, and then we would share answers. Like, what do you think it is? Oh, it is. All right, we're going with this, and blah blah blah. And I made it to the top ninety nine, and then I think I missed like the second or third question. So fuck it. Yeah, but it was fun. Oh, I enjoyed it because it was it was like yeah. trivia, but you're playing with everybody, and then you got to play with your friends at the bottom. It was a good time. Would you? Uh, I know you don't play PUBG because you use your Xbox for uh, podcasting only. Apparently, uh, no, no, I play. Uh, I play Cuphead. Well, I beat Cuphead, so I don't have to play no more. <laughs> uh, I gotta play the. I still have to beat the division. You know, I, I, I occasionally can play you beat it, like, that game I'm though. Bored. Is, huh? Is there a is there a part to beat it or does it just like? Yeah, there's like a like a, there's like a storyline oh, okay. in there that you just got to create the missions. Like you do certain. I think it's like story missions, but there's only a few. Well, I play that, you know, I got to beat that. I still got the Gears of War collection I got to beat. I got, like, maybe, like, two Xbox 360 oh games I got to beat as well. Okay. You know, there's stuff I can still do on my Xbox One. Okay, that's good. Because you were just like, I just use this for Skype. Yeah. And do all my other thing on my PS4. So I, yeah. I get my God of Wars. Which is yeah, I got I pre-ordered that. I pre-ordered When's that come out? A bunch of shit. I don't know, like. June or something like that. Oh my god! Okay, off. that's that's a while off. All right. Well, Joshua, what'd you learn this week? You know what I learned? Uh, I learned that people are going to be so fickle with Marvel villains because as soon as fucking Thanos comes out on that screen on April twenty seventh, people will be like, "Oh, he's the greatest Marvel villain of all time." I'm like, "Weren't you guys sucking Killmonger's dick like two weeks ago?" <laughs> Well, that's a good question. I mean, they have to still make him sympathetic, too. That's how the other villains have really worked out well. 
Like I don't know. People just like get fucking upset. Like fucking Mickey Rourke was a good villain on fucking Iron Man too, because he was just like, I'm fucking crazy and I hate this guy. And I want to <laughs> kill him. Like, like, hey, that's a good villain. He's very simple. What? Nobody liked fucking um Ronan. Oh, no, what was his name? Not Ronan. Uh, it was Ronan. Ronan. Yeah, it was Ronan. It was Ronan. Yeah. Oh, okay. People fucking didn't like Ronan. He was a crazy bastard asshole. And he was working for Thanos. With... And he fucking told Thanos, "Take go fuck yourself. I'm the boss now." Like yeah, exactly. Like, why? Else, no. Why, 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 what? What is this like? This this misconception that oh, Marvel Cinematic Universes are really bad. Uh, with the villains, but the the TV shows were good with the villains. Like, granted, they were good villains on MCU's television shows, but like, I hate that people are like, "Oh, some of their villains sucked." <laughs> like, what the fuck did they want the villains to do? I, or I guess I don't know. The problem is, is like, a lot of them all die. Like, yeah. They, they and here's, here, here's another fucking thing that irks me about: Oh, Killmonger's the greatest villain of all time. He was barely in the fucking movie. Uh, oh, well, he is, yeah. But you felt sympathetic for him. No, I didn't. I'm like, you oh, oh I got daddy problems. My daddy died. So fucking what? Like, <laughs> you were like a fucking killer in the movie. You could have did anything you wanted. You could have probably been a new fucking Captain America if you wanted to be. But no, you wanted to go back to Wakanda and be king and then try to take over the world. Because my daddy got killed. Well, they do say if if a tribe does not accept one of its own... Its own will go back to burn it all down. You have to. Uh, that's what the, it's apparently is an old African verbiage. I probably said it all fucking wrong. Yeah, you did, and now you're gonna get fucking uh, uh, no, accused of corpor- no. cultural <laughs> ap- apparitions and shit. Hey, people, like the fucking see- nerd thinks he knows African culture. <laughs> he don't know shit. Uh, but everybody has no problem being Irish for one certain day. But God forbid you dress up like a Native American on Halloween. Oh, my God. (laughs) Speaking of Irish, I saw, like, the funniest fucking SNL skit with the Irish dating game. Uh, Oh, (laughs) yeah. I saw that, too. Uh, Oh, my God. Wait, (laughs) so so you are related? Are you you excited to be dating your cousins? Yes, this just got a little bit more more competition now, lady. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see the other one with Saturday Night Live where it's uh, the... The girl's game night where she brings her old husband in. And no, I didn't see that one. Oh, check it out. She's trying to get inseminated, so they're having the time, and he's old and in a wheelchair, and she gets a courtesy blanket and sits on his dick while they're trying <laughs> oh, to man, play I gotta, games. I got to see that one. I just had some of it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I opened the bottle. She's mad at me. I had some of her wine. Oh. So, I know. Is there any more uh, root beer left? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I think back. the root beer is gone. I don't know, maybe <laughs> so. No, it's it's the cream soda. I think is the only thing left. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Well, maybe we'll worry, get man. you some root beer or whatever. Yeah, All you right. should have like a couple of root beers so I can make adult root beer floats when there I'm over there. I next know. Time. They were very intricate the way you were making them. You're like, and then I <laughs> shove the bottle in there and everything else. Yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with some. And uh, I heard uh, that uh, John Stewart for the new uh, Teen Titans Go movie is not going to be the John Stewart I know. We just discussed this. I know. I'm saying that's what I learned. This, uh, I know. I, uh, I'm going to hashtag not my John Stewart, and then people are going to get confused. They're like, "What? Why do you hate the guy from The Daily Show?" Anyway, well, I will bring the show to a close. Remember, you can check out Fracking Nerds on. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and find the podcast on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, while they're, they, they're going bankrupt, iTunes, and Google Play for all your listening device. You can also, I think, uh, follow Joshua. He's on Twitter. As, uh, I am at, on Twitter. I'm on Instagram at GreenUpBebop at Instagram and on Twitter. And uh, if you are a nerd who loves wrestling, you can check me out on the Back Row Hecklers podcast uh, where we talk about wrestling and I make fun of things, yes. too. So, and if, yeah. if you're wondering when the new show is up, I would actually recommend following Joshua so that you know when the new show is up. Yes. Uh, we also uh, run out of... I'm going to get it right now because I need to learn how to memorize this. It's the BNMVS Podcast Network, so you can catch us and other podcast related stuff on that on itunes so check it out folks there you go check it out listen to different podcasts remember uh 
Tell people about them. Tell people about us if you think it's a good show. And uh, otherwise, from Joshua all the way over on the East Coast, this is Doc Martins, and have a fracking good week.